Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MC Eternal. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Do you know what is our most important problem in this mod pack? That thing. We need RF. This is a set of numismatic dynamos which is powered by prismarine shards. We set this up on episode 3 and it's making us 40,000 RF per tick. But it's not enough. Not at all. A few episodes ago I suggested that maybe we should start making an oil dimension and make a refinery and some of you guys seems to enjoy that. We don't have osmium. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I forgot to turn this guy off. It's fine. Did I get two? What? And both of them are full. So I'm going to throw one of them in the trash and we're not gonna talk about it. You know what would be funny? I would throw out the original one and this is the one which is glitched out. The only place that we can find osmium is the beneath and if I remember correctly, we had a portal somewhere. Here, I need to be on it, okay. Yes, it's a very friendly place. Oh, there's no osmium. I mined everything here. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have to move this. I don't know which episode it was, but I did dig a small tunnel over here in order to get some uranium. So we're going to use this place. Yes, here it's much better. We have at least 1000 ores, which is good. I just wanted to show you the most irritating thing that someone can do in Minecraft. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I think we should just make it a bit bigger so that this doesn't happen again. How much health do you have? 320. We run. They are strong over here. The thing is in this mod pack because of very weird configurations, our digital miner is going to mine one block every 20 seconds. So it's gonna take a while until we get osmium. So what I'm trying to say is that do we have any other pump? Yeah, I didn't want to go with build craft, but uh, we don't have a choice. It's good that we have a quantum entangler porter. <laughs> That's good. In order to make a dimension out of oil, we're going to need at least 128 buckets of oil. And there's an oil gazer over there. I think they're called gazers. Actually, I'm not sure what they're called. I'm not an oil expert. What are you? Hello. So if we go on top of the oil fountain or geyser or whatever it's called, we can put a pump. Normally you should power it with redstone engines, but I'm thinking if we use an ultimate universal cable from mechanism, which doesn't connect. Why you don't connect? You should connect your universal cable. There might be a solution. So if we make a golden transport pipe and then upgrade it with redstone, this will be a golden kinesis pipe, meaning that it's going to transfer energy. So do you connect? Yes. So do you connect to a universal cable? No, that failed. If I connect you to a quantum entangler porter, you should technically work? No. I'm trying not to sound very stupid, but this is called an ultimate universal cable. It can handle RF, EU, and joules. And this works on MJ. You want engines? You get engines. I'm not picky. I wanted to be picky, but unfortunately I don't have a choice. And the drum goes on top. So are you getting me oil? Yes, we are getting oil. At a very amazing speed of, I don't know, one bucket every half an hour? Okay, no. I was hoping that we would be able to make an offshore platform and try to refine oil over there so that we would be able to get the fuel that we need in order to power more generators. The thing is, I did not know that mechanism jewels is different from Minecraft jewels because they're both MJ. So if different types of power are not compatible, maybe we should try other means. If we craft a dimlet workbench from RF tools, we should be able to see all the dimensions that we can make. We can make a dimension out of empowered oil. <laughs> Okay. A crude oil dimension is rarity 5. Wow. Yeah, it seems that every type of oil is rarity 5. Just for fun, we can make a dimension out of Dew of the Void, and then we would be able to power the Ender Generator from Ender.io, which without any upgrades, it will give us 540 RF per tick. I just spent the last hour cleaning up this area, and you might be wondering, Lush, there's nothing here. Why would you spend one hour over here? Exactly. That's the point. You see nothing. Because this area was full of floating trees, oil everywhere, water sources were mixed up, and I had to fix literally every single one. So now it looks decent. And during that one hour, I had to do a lot of thinking and also a lot of planning. It seems we have to work on our infrastructure because our infrastructure is basically garbage. We don't have any income of ores, especially osmium, and we don't even have enough RF in order to run a dimension which is rarity 5. And even if we get the initial oil that we're going to need in order to run that dimension, that's still not gonna work because that dimension is so expensive that I need like 200 dynamos. The first part of our infrastructure which we need to fix is how to get osmium. What are you doing here? That scared me. There is no osmium seed from mystical agriculture, but there is an agri-craft equivalent which requires crystalline seeds, which is basically nether quartz. So we need to get some of them from here. And here in the beneath, because our digital miner is not working as fast as it should, we are looking for osmium. 
as well as any other ore from nuclear craft. Yeah, imagine insta mining with a hammer. Yeah, I would say we have a decent amount. We can go back home. We need to start by making crystalline seeds. And the way that you make crystalline seeds is that you have to mix redstone with glowstone. With crop sticks, of course. And I have a creative watering can, so this should be slightly easier. Hopefully. Oh, you need a thing. Yeah, I forgot that we need to put a nether quartz there. And then farmland. Oops. And then crop sticks. Yes. We have it. I think. Yeah, exactly. Then what we need to do is to take that crystalline and the pheromone and have osmium in the center with gravel so that we would be able to get osmium. You can do it. Come on. So, how's life? Mine is boring. Yes, finally. And it gives you a nugget. Okay. We're also going to need to make the seeds for the ingots from nuclear craft. So we're going to start with boron, lithium, uranium, and magnesium. And since I have to 10, 10, 10 all of these, See you in like one hour. Personally, I'm not a fan of AgriCraft and I find it really boring, but I think I developed a plan how to make them grow faster. So what I normally do is that once you get the mutated crop in the center, I will take all of them out. I analyze the one which is in the center and then I put it in the center again and make it spread to the other ones. Then I take it out and put the double crop sticks. So in this way, the four parent crops have all the same stats and the one in the center should grow faster. I mean, mutate to a better crop. And I'm guessing uranium will be 10, 10, 10, right? Yes. Osmium is also close. We don't need the strength, but uh, OCD. It has been just over an hour and we have lithium seeds, osmium, boron, magnesium, and uranium. And all of them are 10, 10, 10. And we're going to grow them in our diamond farm over here because we don't need diamonds anymore. Well, obviously we do need diamonds. It's just that we don't need diamonds for coins. In our farm over here, we have 16 sections. I'm going to use eight of them just for osmium. But the thing is we need to get rid of the diamonds. Did I put an access hatch? No. There is something over here which is causing a crazy amount of lag and I don't know what it is. The sprinklers are off. They were never on. And whatever it is, it's actually down here. So obviously we're going to use two of them for uranium, two of them for lithium, two of them for boron. What? Why? Why? I'm extremely confused. It was growing a minute ago. Oh, the soil is not valid. So how the hell are you growing? Huh. <laughs> okay. This was fertile soil and I just switched it with normal dirt. So can I plant you now? That is weird. And we just put the magnesium here. And we just have to make them spread. I think I did not miss anything. Yeah, it seems correct. And obviously we're going to need a crafter from RF tools. And we go to the basement. Which is still work in progress. This was the crafter which I was using for diamonds. We remove you and we put this one. And we also don't need you. We just need one ender chest. Yeah. So the first recipe is going to be for osmium good and then obviously uranium boron lithium and of course magnesium so how much osmium do we have where did it go <laughs> oh you're going here ah it's fine i had to go into spectator mode several times to see what is causing lag and i still don't know <laughs> i know it's here because i can feel it here and whenever i'm looking this way i get lag but there's nothing over there. I thought maybe it's the force field from RF tools, maybe it is the glasses from engineer's decor, but uh, it wasn't any of them. Anyhow, it's a laggy mod pack anyway, and there's pretty much nothing we can do about it. So we have a decent supply of osmium right now, which is very good, and also a decent supply of uranium. Why are you different? I don't know why it's different. We needed those ingots because we need to get into serious power. So we're either going to go with a mechanism fusion reactor or even the one from nuclear craft because we need serious power and uh, you know with dynamos that's not gonna happen. The only issue that we have with a fusion reactor from mechanism is that it is going to require sunlight because there is something called a solar neutron collector which is going to make us tritium and that is going to require sunlight and we don't have sunlight over there. So I just wanted to check if we put a solar panel in the desert, even though it's raining in the other biomes. Do you work? Yes. Yes. You're working, right? You're not joking with me. Okay, then it's easy. Just out of curiosity, do you also work in the savanna or not? Yes, you do. And the reason that I had to check this is because it is actually cloudy and you can hear thunderstorms, but uh, apparently you don't need the sun. They just bypassed my missile system. 
and we're done well this actually required a lot of preparation and a lot of crafting but i think we have everything we are going to need in order to set up a fusion reactor from mechanism but we need to start by making hdpe and i think we can do it here generally speaking i hate using a sink but the thing is we don't have a better solution in this mod pack so we're going to have a sink we're going to have a mechanical pipe and then we're going to have an electrolytic separator on top. We give you power and it will make us oxygen and hydrogen and we are going to dump the excess. Then we're going to take that hydrogen and put it in a PRC. Then we're going to need another sink down here with a mechanical pipe and the PRC on top. So this is configured so that it will get water from the bottom and gases from the back. It sounds weird, I know. If you put any type of crop or any type of seed in a crusher, you will get biofuel and if you put the biofuel in the PRC which is having hydrogen and water you will get substrate eventually one day maybe and a little bit of ethylene I always have to check so this ethylene that we have over here is a gas so we are going to use a pressurized tube and we are going to extract it into a rotary condenser crater and if we provide it with power it will take that ethylene and it will give us liquid ethylene now that we have the liquid ethylene what we have to do is that we need to put it in another PRC together with oxygen and if we give it substrate it will make us HDPE we actually need like three pieces of HDPE but I am going to make this a little bit more clean since we do not need a crazy amount of HDPE I'm not going to make this fully automatic I did install an elite crushing factory over here which has seven slots and if we put seven stacks of items inside this should work fine and it should give us tons of HDPE. I also hooked it up to an ender chest so that it will go into our ME system also someone told me that you should not put the electrolytic separator on dumping excess well I didn't and this happened so we're going to dump excess. We needed the HDPE in order to make the HDPE sheet so that we would be able to make the solar neutron activator which will make us tritium. I think it will make us tritium, maybe it's deuterium. No, it's tritium, okay. For the mechanism reactor, I have prepared a very small area in the desert, I have flattened it out and this should be enough in order to have all of our machines. The mechanism reactor requires two different fuels deuterium which you will get it from heavy water and tritium which you get it from lithium and this is why we needed the solar neutron activator i think we should start with deuterium so therefore we need to start by getting heavy water i want every section of the production to fit within one chunk and this is why we're doing it like this we are going to start by making heavy water and for that we're going to use 16 pumps and obviously this is not the most efficient way of setting up pumps but i like symmetry so I'm gonna do it like this and in any case I think it will look cooler if you put a mechanism pump on top of a water source it will provide you with water right but there is an upgrade called the filter upgrade which will make heavy water from regular water and you have to put that in and you have to put the filter upgrade inside the pump before you give it power unfortunately this quantum entangler porter was connected to power so some of these pumps got water I have to empty them and you can see that they are producing heavy water it's incredibly slow and this is why I made a bajillion upgrades and needless to say this is why we needed tons of osmium yeah you see fully upgraded it's not that bad this is the way that I prefer to make heavy water but it's actually not the most efficient way of making heavy water the thing is it makes much more sense if you put the pumps in a row like this because this way you will use less quantum entangler porter less pipes and you can fit more pumps in one chunk but in my brain I'm picturing a building and I think this will go well with it it's not efficient but it will look nice and we're going to hook it up to an enter tank so that we can process it later on in the center I think we are going to have our electrolytic separator and we give it the heavy water and if we give it power and upgrades it will make us deuterium and oxygen which we're going to dump you don't need the oxygen we are producing deuterium now it's time to focus on tritium which is the second fuel that we're going to need and in order to do that we need to start with a thermal evaporation tower this is a multi-block structure by mechanism and it's a 4x4 structure it has to be hollow in the middle and it can be as tall as 18 blocks and the taller it is the more efficient it will be on the 18th level you need to have the thermal evaporation tower controller which is facing the wrong way yeah much better and you're also going to need to have four solar panels of course technically you don't always need to have solar panels on top you can use a resistive heater but a resistive heater which provides heat to this tower is going to consume a lot of energy which I don't have so for now we're going to use solar panels and this guy is also going to require two valves one of them will be for water so we're going to use a beautiful sink again did I went too high 
Yes. Yeah, I forgot that I went down by one level, so it's okay. We can fix it. So we put the valve here and now you should connect. Yes. If we provide this guy with water and it will provide us with Brian. The amount of Brian that you will get depends on the biome that you're in. If it's in a desert and it's hot, it will be faster. And if you put resistive heaters, it will also go up dramatically. I think I'm going to have four evaporation towers in order to make Brian. And then we are going to have two of them in order to convert that Brian into liquid lithium and obviously we need to take that liquid lithium convert it into lithium and put it in a solar neutron activator in order to get tritium so let me set everything up and then i'll be right back okay we have our six thermal evaporation towers four of them are for making brian and two of them will be for making lithium out of that brian hello i'm going to do this in a very weird way but you don't have to do it like this i do have an ender tank which is yellow and yellow and that will take the brian from here and put it into this chunk for these two thermal evaporation towers so that they would be able to make lithium but obviously you can just make a pipe from there to here so we just extract you and then if we extract it over here you should make me lithium yes of course this is the liquid lithium we need to convert it into a gas and then into tritium I would like to mention that I make most of these stupid decisions because I want things to be clean and neat and symmetrical and this is why they are not as efficient as they should be or some of the decisions might look weird for instance that one or even this one but uh, I don't like janky cabling that much unless I can hide it under a facade or something I made a few changes so instead of producing deuterium over here I actually brought our electrolytic separator down here because I want things to be as close as possible to the reactor. Also the lithium that we're getting from this thermal evaporation tower is in liquid form and we need to convert it into a gas form. So I have our rotary concentrator over here and I hooked it up to an ender tank which I left it somewhere here. There are a stupid amount of mobs everywhere. So if I put the tank over here, we just need to flip you and now you should get lithium. And obviously it helps if I give you RF. Cool. Lithium. We're going to extract the lithium and we're going to put it in our solar neutron activator. Aha. So currently this guy is not working because there's no sun. <laughs> but generally this guy should make us tritium. And since this guy is using sunlight, it does not require RF. And just to keep everything symmetrical, we're going to put the reactor over here. Yeah, the multi-block structure for the mechanism reactor is relatively easy. All you have to do is to make a star shape pattern like this and you literally copy that for every single side. So you will come up with something which looks like this. Every side is a star, even the top. But now we have to make a few changes. So in the central block at the top, we're going to add the controller. So you go over there and it is formed. Huh. <laughs> okay. In order to input the fuel, we are also going to add reactor ports. So you go over here and you go over here. One of them is for deuterium and one of them is for tritium. And I think we are going to add another one over here in order to extract the RF. We are also going to remove these blocks and replace them with reactor glass. And then we are also going to need a laser focus matrix in the center. If we fire a giant laser into the reactor using this laser focus matrix, the reactor will be heated up and it will start functioning. So now that it's daytime, you can see that our neutron activator is making us tritium, which I don't know if I have mentioned it or not, but that is also a gas. This is going to be my janky wiring, but I'm actually going to cover this part, so you will never see it. This is deuterium and this is tritium. We are not done yet, but in order to activate the reactor itself, we need to start making a laser. And in order to make that laser, you're going to need a lot of these laser amplifiers and they are facing the wrong way yeah i think this way it is correct this red dot should be aligned with this laser focus matrix the way that you start up a mechanism reactor is that you have to fire a laser beam into the core which is 1 billion rf strong and in order to make it up to 1 billion rf you're going to need a lot of these laser amplifiers and you need to configure the final one, which is right next to the laser focus matrix, to a redstone signal of high, I think, so that you can store the power in the laser amplifier and you can fire it whenever you want to. And therefore, we're going to add a lever. And now we need to supply the amplifiers with RF. And the way that you do that is through these lasers. All of them have to be aligned to the laser amplifiers. And obviously, the more of them you have, the faster this guy will charge. So if we provide it with RF, now it's charging up. Yes, very slowly. And uh, just FYI, this will burn you. I'm guessing we can add a few more on the top. And just in case you didn't know, when you fire the main laser, it's actually going to be so powerful that it can one-shot the wither. We made a wither form with it in Enigmatica 2. 
if you remember. While this guy is charging up and it could take a very long time, I was thinking maybe we should start making a little bit of DT fuel, because in order to activate the reactor, you're going to need to provide it with a little bit of DT fuel. And the way that you do that is that you're going to need a chemical infuser, it will mix tritium with deuterium, and it will give you DT fuel. And you can take it out. And that's all we need, ready for reaction. Most of you already know this, but you should not insert the DT fuel directly into your reactor, because it will burn out the entire fuel and it will turn off. And the best way to control the reaction is that you will have different pipes for tritium and deuterium, because the reactor will make DT fuel itself. So we put you in, and then we are going to tell it to have the fuel injection rate of 10. Yes, 10 millibuckets per tick. We don't want to go that crazy because we don't have any way to store that power. And I want to make an induction matrix, but unfortunately it's going to require so much osmium and <laughs> we don't have that. So are you done? No. I think we have everything we're going to need. You just have to set one of the reactor ports to output so that you can extract the power. And this guy is also charged up, so we should be able to fire it without it hitting us. Let us hope that everything works. So I made a mistake which I always do. If you want to specify the injection rate, once you type it, you have to press enter, otherwise it will not register. So I have to wait for you again. <laughs> I'm going to add more lasers because I don't want to wait that long. Yeah, exactly. Now it should charge faster, not by much. I put more DT fuel inside, the fuel injection rate is correct, and this guy is fully charged up. Here we go again. It works! Yes! And it is already generating us 600,000 RF. If I'm not wrong with the fuel injection rate that we have, this guy should generate us, I don't know, 2 to 2.5 million RF per tick, which is not that bad. But next episode, when we make the induction matrix, we're going to go higher than this, because we have a place to store that RF. Because right now, literally everything is being wasted. 900,000 and 1 million RF. Haha, <laughs> it will still go higher than that, but we don't have to watch it. Anyway, guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, we are going to name the dragon next episode very democratically, because you know that I love democracy.